Hi and welcome to my show and uh, today instead of my usual cup of tea I've got myself a smoothie. I, I made the smoothie myself and uh, sorry we're running a little bit late today. We ha actually had a, a really late evening yesterday. We were out the whole day at a crystal market or fair where I bought some really lovely pieces of crystals. But anyway I'm here now so we were running late this morning and I'm here now and I want to introduce my behind the scenes intrepid um, technician Boo. <laughs> Hi Boo. Oh, you caught me off guard there. I'm just prepping and uh, just uh, queuing the system to bring in comments for today. But hello, everybody. Good morning. Buenos dias. Bonjour. Guten Tag. Guten Abend. And, hola. Uh, oh, hola. And uh, yeah, you caught me off guard here. I'm going back. I'm, I'm going to go back and hide behind my computer. I'll no, I, I think people like you. They like your voice. They like you. Um, <laughs> they probably want to see you, even in your pajamas. Apparently, I've been told I have the perfect, the perfect face for radio. <laughs> you do. Thank you. So, so I would love to hear your questions as well. So please, um, you know, please post your questions and I'll answer some of them. And I think what we've done today is Danny's going to, he, he does this, he pulls up some of the most frequently asked questions and, uh, and then he'll start asking them to me over the air and you guys will hear him. So let's go whenever you're ready. Okay, let me reach into the big barrel, shuffle, 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 and pull out. Ooh, okay, all right, here's a very interesting question. Everybody, of course, will know that this question has been pre-selected as number one because it's got something to do with the title of today's show. <laughs> Actually, I don't always see the title. Sometimes you type it in and I don't know what it is until after. So mm -hmm, that's the beauty mm -hmm, of this mm -hmm, show. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You okay. like my new glasses. Okay, go. <laughs> A question has come in. It says, Anita, you spoke about the meme of garbage being piled up in a previous episode. You spoke about it being piled up and moved. Where does this garbage come from in the first place? You know, that's a great question because you're right. I noticed a few people ask that question. So that's in reference to a Facebook Live video or in reference to a video I did a couple of weeks ago. And if you haven't seen it yet, please check it out. I did it around three weeks ago, if my memory serves me correctly. And what I actually said is that very often the way that we work through our problems in this paradigm, in this belief system that we are in, is that we see this pile of garbage, you know, the drama, the mess we're in. We see this in front of us, and if we uh, make it more tangible, if, we, if I was to use the metaphor of garbage in terms of the drama that we're entangled in, or the life we're living that we don't like, or the job we hate. So let's say this is like represented as a pile of garbage piled up right in front of us. And so what we tend to do to clear that garbage is that we tend to, uh, we tend to pick at it and kind of throw it behind us. We throw it behind us, throw it behind us. And until the garbage is, we watch it go down and we feel a level of satisfaction. Oh, I'm clearing my dramas. I'm clearing the mess. I'm clearing the mess in my life. And it gets to the bottom and we're like, ah, I've cleared it all. And we turn around and there it is. Again, the big pile of garbage right behind us, which is that same garbage that we've thrown behind us. And we're not aware we're doing this. We think we're clearing it, but we've act, all we've done is moved it. And so we think, Oh my God, it's come up really fast again. So we do the same thing. We clear it and we throw it behind us. And, uh, and we do this because we don't know how to clear it for once and for all. But what we end up believing, because we throw it behind us and we turn around and there it is again, we believe that the garbage is piling up faster than we can clear it. In other words, we think that while I'm clearing this, my problems are still building up on the other side. We don't realize that all we've done is moved it from one side to the other. So what we end up doing, because we believe that our problems are coming up faster than we can clear it, we get really stressed out trying to work faster and faster and faster. 
but we bought into a dominant belief system where our very actions are actions that create problems. It's in the action that we are actually creating the problem. As we're clearing the problem, we're creating more. Hence the metaphor is, as I'm clearing this problem, I'm not actually getting rid of it. I have just moved it and then it'll come back to me. And so no matter how fast I work, and this is the problem, people are moving faster and faster and faster, but they seem to have more and still the same amount of problems. And it is because this is the way we're handling it. We are moving really fast, but we're just moving the problem. So anyway, my point, the point is, or the point of the question is, how do we really clean the garbage or where does the garbage come from in the first place? The garbage comes from our dominant belief system, this belief system that we've bought into that we are not enough. That's where it comes from. That's what the real core of the garbage is. It's the belief that we're not enough. So if we take back again, the, the, if we go back to the metaphor of the garbage, the way to really get rid of the garbage is to do the hard work of instead of just tossing the garbage, doing what's easy, just putting it behind us where we can't see it, we literally have to bring a truck or a wheelbarrow. We have to scoop it up put it in the wheelbarrow and go and take it to an incinerator and get rid of it for once and for all. That is much harder work. And many of us believe that I'm so busy clearing this garbage, I'm so scared more garbage will come up, I don't have time to, to take this to the incinerator to burn it because while <clears throat> we believe that while I'm doing that, more garbage is being piled up. But in actuality, <clears throat> what you are doing is you're clearing it for once and for all. But we have bought into a dominant belief system that I have to keep moving because I'm not good enough. I have to do more, be more. And this is how, and because we bought into that, that I have to keep moving the garbage. I have to keep doing this. I can't take the time out to, I can't stop and put it all into a wheelbarrow or a dump truck, take it to the incinerator, put it in the incinerator, burn it, get rid of it for once and for all. We're afraid to take that time out. So, so how do we apply that in real life? So for example, you could be in a job that you hate and you are thinking like, oh my God, I hate this job, but I'm feeding my family from this job. And so maybe if I work harder, if I work faster, um, I will make more money so I can retire earlier. See, but the problem is in the thinking that I have to stay in this job because I am afraid to leave it. That is the garbage that you need to get rid of is in that thinking. And if you actually made the move, did the hard work and took the risk of quitting that job, what would actually happen is that your head would become clearer to receive the messages from the other side to guide you into something that you are meant to do. And we do this in all kinds of ways, you know, and we buy into more of the garbage. It's like we start to earn more money even though we're in a job we hate. But what we do is we think, okay, let me compensate because this job now brings me more money. I don't want to downsize even though it's, it's got its perks. You know, you say, oh, it gives me the the, the medical insurance, it, give, it pays my rent. And then as you get paid more doing a job you hate, you buy into more stuff, you buy into a bigger house. So you're locked into a bigger mortgage. So you're running faster and faster on this treadmill, feeding something, but what you don't realize is you are getting more stuck into the cycle of just building up the garbage and just putting it behind you, compensating this garbage, compensating this life with the stuff, which is actually going to keep you more trapped in the cycle of just clearing the garbage, but then turning around and seeing it there. You end up creating that same problem perpetually. If you actually took the plunge and quit the job, maybe by even getting your family and the people you support on your side and tell you and tell them that, um, I want, you know, that this job is eating me alive. I really don't like it, but it means together we have to downsize for a while. And you might get surprised because I know people who have done this. They have actually quit that job, even though they've had a lot of fear around it, but they knew that the way they were going wasn't working for them. 
And when they did it, they felt this lightness, this release, and it allowed all these other opportunities to come in. So the job is one example, but there's many exa examples. It's like even our education system makes you believe that um, you have to get ahead of everyone else. And it's that thinking, that very thinking, that is what creates the, the garbage which you keep moving. When you um, run your life by believing you have to do what gets you ahead of everyone else, you set yourself up for an unhappy life. You need to have a life doing and following your dreams and doing what brings you joy. Um, in fact, the problem is that what sets up the garbage is the dominant belief system, as I said. But here's what you will start to notice as you start to live your own life and be who you are and follow your own heart. You will start to notice that people who actually buy into the dominant belief system, most of them are not that happy. But the people who are seen as a little bit off the beaten track, a little bit eccentric, a little bit... Um, you know, who removed themselves, who took that risk of quitting that job, even when everyone said, you're crazy to do that. How could you leave that? Those are the people that are actually a lot happier. And one more thing, this metaphor, this garbage metaphor also applies with our illnesses because I have noticed, for example, that our, um, that, that our medical paradigm has us believe that if we don't do certain things medically, that if you don't do this, if you don't follow this protocol, don't do this, uh, don't, if you don't do the chemo, whatever, you're going to get even worse. You're, it's, you're going to die. You're going to die. And so you buy into this dominant belief system again, where you are then rushing against a clock, um, just taking in everything they say. And it's not just the meds. You know, if the meds make you feel good and they work for you, you do it. I don't want to tell you not to listen to your doctor. But the thing to watch out for is if you are made to feel like you are running against a clock and you are running in fear and the cancer is going faster than you can kill it, then what you have done is you have fallen into that paradigm of just actually, you're not clearing your illness from the root. You're not doing the work of clearing it from the root. You have fallen into that paradigm of just shifting it and thinking, oh my God, it's grown there. Shifting it and thinking, oh, it's grown there. And every time they give you the meds, you're like, we got to give more meds. We got to kill it with more meds. We got to go faster. That's the paradigm. That's the dominant belief system. So to remove yourself from that, you know, for example, when I healed from the cancer, when I was on the other side, that's what I could see. The garbage was buying into that dominant belief system, which is fear-based, it's um, scarcity-based, it's illness-based as opposed to health-based. Um, and, and so you buy into that and that is the garbage. It's healing at that level. And I realized that having almost died from cancer and coming back and living in the old dominant belief system, I would again get trapped into the beliefs that I need to be really careful that the cancer doesn't come back. And I need to keep going for the tests and keep doing this and keep having the scans and, um, and, and stay in that fear-based paradigm, which is what creates the garbage in the first place. So, so um, if, you know, if I was going to go back into my old life, I would have had to stay in that fear-based paradigm. The harder thing to do, you know, the easier thing to do when you come out of an illness is go back to your old life. The harder thing to do is to remove yourself and start a new life. But I knew that was what I had to do because that is what I had learned is what caused the cancer in the first place. It's that fear-based paradigm. And again, I understand for a lot of people, you'll say, oh, but it's impossible for me to just make the move. I have kids in school and all. Well, just be aware and then make the shift slowly. Just make it at the pace that you can make it. But remember what you're trying to do when I say to clear the garbage, the garbage really comes from our dominant belief systems. And we seem to live in a paradigm where our dominant belief systems come from a fear-based place. And just look around you and you will see that. And 
Um, it's very easy to fall back into that when you watch TV, when you hang with different people who feel fearful. It's not their fault. Don't blame them. Don't judge them. It is just what seems we seem to have created. Um, you may seem to be, people might judge you as being a bit off when you don't buy into the fears because that's what I had to do. I was actually saying, nope, I'm not buying into this fear. I am not going to fall back into that old trap again. And people thought I was living in la la land because they were saying I wasn't being realistic, but look at me 13 years on and I love my life. I couldn't be happier with what I'm doing, but I had to remove myself from the dominant belief system in order to create my happy place and my happy life. So don't be afraid to do that. Please don't be afraid to do that. And I'd love to read some of the comments. Um, so, uh, Brandy Beck writes, I'm in a toxic relationship and I'm afraid that I won't be able to take care of myself due to chronic illness. Have you thought of the fact that maybe your chronic illness is because you're in a toxic relationship? You've given me a perfect example. First of all, I'm sending you a big hug. This is not a judgment, Brandy Beck. If you were in front of me, I would give you a real hug. Right now, I'm giving you a virtual hug. Um, Brandy says, also, I love our homestead and the possibilities we could have. Really struggling with this one. Okay, so Brandy, sending you so much love and gratitude for giving me the perfect example of what I'm talking about. Um, you're afraid to leave, a, you've admitted in your own words, it's a toxic relationship, but it gives you care and support because of your chronic illness. What if the chronic, the toxic relationship is what's creating the chronic illness? So you are dealing with the chronic illness and you are feeding. So it's exactly that where I have this garbage, which is the toxic relationship and I'm trying to throw it out. But, but here I have the chronic illness to deal with. And I think the, re, the listeners will know what I mean by this, because if you were willing to do the hard work of extricate yourself from the relationship, it doesn't mean you have to leave your homestead. There are different ways of doing this. Um, you can build a tribe of people around you who can, who understand you, who can support you. There are people who will post right here on the thread below you. People will send you their love and empathy because there are so many beautiful, beautiful people who post on this page and who post under my videos and they're going to send you their love. And I'm sure they'll even send you their suggestions. But my suggestion is to build a tribe of people you love who can encourage you and help you through this. Join my Facebook page called From Healing to Whole. There are people, there are angels in there who will help you through this. There are healers in there who are really beautiful, who I would highly recommend, uh, who will help you through this. But what you need is to, you, you need to resolve your toxic relationship first so that your chronic illness will heal. So the idea is not about staying in the toxic relationship because it somehow supports your illness. It is actually causing your illness. Um, and my dear friend Ute says, I left a toxic relationship, best thing I ever did. Well done, because uh, I know it's not always easy. Find help, a counselor or self-help group. Toxic relationships can really bring you down. Absolutely. So please, if you're in a toxic relationship that you know is toxic, find help. Even if you can't walk out right away for whatever reasons, you know, if you have kids and, but remember even kids are being affected by the fact that you are in a toxic relationship because you bring who you are. You energetically, you bring who you are to everyone you encounter. So please, please get help. Um, because toxic relationships affect your energy on every level. And, um, oh, Kristen Burns Farmer, thank you. She says, thank you for all you do. Thank you. Thank you for your, um, for your love. And I want to thank everybody who posts. And uh, your vibe attracts your tribe, Lily Harry Roa. Yes, it does for everybody. So we all got to um, create our own tribe. And if you, if you love your tribe, it means you're creating a good vibe. So thank you for that endorsement because I actually do love my tribe. I love the people who post uh, under my videos. 
and Danielle says hello from France. Hi Danielle, nice to see you and hear from you. And um, Petra says quitting my job has given me so much peace. Well done on doing that. Peace in my mind, no more stress and I am more self-aware. Yes, exactly, because you kind of clear the space. When you clear that garbage, you clear the space. But, ima- but remember, don't just move it, clear it, like clear it completely. And uh, Spela says, love your shirt. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm glad you love it. Thank you. It was, it's, it's a yoga shirt. It's a, a very inexpensive and a, it's a yoga shirt. This, uh, this is my smoothie glass, which I love. You know, I can't believe how much I love this, this glass. I saw it on Amazon. And I was like, oh my God, I have to have this. I just love the colors. So um, hence I brought it on my show today because I was so excited about it because it's brand new. <laughs> um, so shall we go into another question? As I spin the barrel. No, <laughs> Your I can't virtual even, barrel. As I spin the virtual barrel. Actually, Actually, it's a stack of papers here that I'm just shuffling through. Um, Okay, let's pull this one. Um, All right, Uh, Anita, people want to know. Oh, okay, this one's weird. Anita, people want to know if they know all of your stuff, watched all of your videos, what can they get from coming to your retreats? For example, the cruise. Okay, that's a, that's a really great question. And I get people asking me that, or I've noticed people writing that sometimes where if they've watched all the videos, if you've watched the videos and you've read the book and people are kind of thinking, well, I've got all the information, what more is there to learn? So I, I want to mention that um, that's actually a really great question because it gives me an opportunity to actually explain what happens in a retreat, for example, like the cruise. Um, I get pretty excited about the cruises, but what I love about the live retreats where we get to spend several days together is that it's more experiential. And the best part is I've actually developed it with the people who know my work in mind. So in other words, if somebody doesn't know my work at all and they've never heard of me, you would think they would get the most out of my retreats because they don't know me. This is all new. But I would actually rather people read the book and watch a couple of videos coming before coming to my retreat because you'll get a lot more out of it um, if, if you can do that, a lot more. Because the, I created these five, seven day retreats to go deeper for the people who've already, who already feel I've learned everything I can, but I'm still unable to experience it. Of course, even if you can experience it on your own, we create an environment where you can continue to experience it and deepen it. But here's what I'm talking about, about it being experiential. What we do in the retreats, for example, one thing I do is I talk about the signs from your guides and your signs from your loved ones, but your spiritual guides from the other side. And we talk about how to identify them. During the retreat, you actually do start to look for the signs and you will journal about them and you will talk about them during our events. Um, Also, what we do is together, we create an energy space that is of a higher level, like a more healing and a more, um, it's of a much more optimum healing and joyful level of energy. We create like a very safe space, an arena of energy, which you will be immersed in between us, between the group, whether the group is uh, 50 50 people, 100 people, 150, 200, it doesn't matter. We open up by all of us feeling this higher, getting into this higher space, and we maintain it for the full time of the seven days or however long we're together, so that you get into the habit of feeling what it feels like to be in that higher healing energy. If you've watched my videos, you will know I talk about how we heal on an energetic level. And if we knew what it was that made our energy level goes up so we could stay in that space longer, 
our bodies heal by themselves. The idea is to create a safe space for us to stay in that energy where all of us consciously contribute to that higher level, that higher frequency. So we are in that healing space. So we start to feel healing taking place in, in our bodies. And we will be doing it through meditation, through sound healing. Um, my friend Gerilyn Glass is coming on the cruise to create the sound vibrations for us live because sounds go where other things, where medicines and even herbal remedies and food can't get to. Um, so they really get to you on a, on a cell, cellular level. And she creates her music for healing. So this is what we will be doing. And I will be taking you on your own near-death experience in, again, a safe arena. So um, I just love doing the retreats because for me, as I create this for all of us, we all get to bathe in it together, including me. Your batteries get recharged. You learn how to receive. You receive abundance. You learn what it feels like because I know so many of you are good at giving, but you don't know how to receive. At a retreat like this, everything is taken care of for you. The food, the entertainment, the laughter, the love. So you really learn how to receive in a big way. And you really understand what it is to be who you are and carry yourself in the world so that when you go out into the world, this is what you will be bringing with you. And it'll stay with you for a long time after you've completed the retreat. That's the idea of what I am trying to create. And there are some side effects and the side effects include feeling happier, more joyful, more bliss, laughing out of context, having more fun, not taking life so seriously. And finally, a total feeling of well-being. And if you do experience any of the side effects, please do not call your doctor. So that's, I get. <laughs> you thought that was funny. <laughs> Danny and I have a little bit of a, a, a competition thing going on as to who's funnier because He's a really funny guy, so it's hard to be, beat him and be funnier than him. And I always get a thrill when he thinks I'm funny. I thought that was absolutely hilarious. <laughs> Don't call your doctor. Because there's lots of side effects You've, for my retreats. Tons. If you, if you suffer from euphoria and happiness and enjoyment, do not call your doctor. Exactly. <laughs> That's the way to do it. You should, <laughs> I should have given you that last part to read out. <laughs> Speaking of competitions... Yes. Do you want to mention the competition that... Actually, no, I'll mention it. I want to mention <laughs> the competition that Anita is running for that meditation, that, that, that NDE meditation CD. Uh, cue Anita holding up meditation CD to oh, camera. Oh, right, of course. <laughs> right. Anita's meditation CD with Barry Goldstein. There's a competition for it, for anybody who wants to uh, win it before it actually goes live. It, it doesn't come out until February 2nd. Oh, and I just wanted to say what it is. It's a guided meditation to take you on your own near-death experience. And um, so I, it took over a year to create it. I created it with the wonderful Barry Goldstein, the musician, the healing, sound healing musician. And it took us a long time to get it exactly right. Um, there is a little video about it. I'd love for you to watch the video that tells you more about it. And yeah, we're running a competition in this week's newsletter, aren't we? Well, yes, the newsletter went out on Thursday. Uh, the next newsletter won't go out until next, uh, Thursday. until next Thursday. So if anybody signs up for your newsletter now, they're going to get that one. And in that, in that newsletter, and only in that newsletter, are instructions on how to play the competition. Competition ends... Yeah. It, it ends on Wednesday. It on, en ends on Wednesday. And on Wednesday, um, Pacific time, basically. And then on Thursday, we're announcing the names of the winners. Uh, and we wanted to, um, we actually wanted to launch the CD for sale, for purchase on February the 2nd, which, or February the 1st, because February the 2nd is the day that I had my near-death experience 13 years ago. So we wanted to use that as kind of our launch date. It was an auspicious launch I date. I think that's a very auspicious date to, to actually have something, you know, like that CD come up. 
I think, yes. that's, a, I think that's a good idea. And do you know, we actually started creating it a year and a half ago for, we wanted to launch it last year, 2018, February the 2nd. But we didn't feel it was ready. We felt it needed more work because we wanted to make sure not only that you have the deep experience of your own near-death experience, but that you were brought out correctly and grounded so that you're not like left floating in that, you know, space, conscious space. So, so we really added a lot more work to it and we still wanted to keep the date as February the 2nd. So here we are. It's completed work. So, um, yeah, I'm really excited about this. I'm excited about so many of the projects that, that I'm working on at the moment. And that's why I'm so thankful to all of you for your support. And, and thank you. Somebody's actually posted live events equals live energy. Yes, that's exactly it. It's a very energetically, it's a different, different. And again, as I said before, for those of you who are very familiar with my work, I actually like it. I actually develop these retreats with the people who are familiar with my work in mind because it's time to go deeper is what I actually feel. Um, shall we take a few more questions and then we'll go into the next question that you have for me from what you've drawn from the big barrel. There's only one thing. A couple of people have asked, why, where do we, how do we sign up to this uh, newsletter? Oh, of course. So I'm just going to punch it up here and I'll let you explain since you're better at explaining stuff. <laughs> no, I think you're very good at explaining stuff. So this is on my website. It's uh, www.anitamurjani.com slash sign up. Um, and this is the form you look for. You sign on it. It's uh, just a, it's a subscription to Anita's newsletter. And yeah, just basically it's a subscription to my newsletter. Um, you can sign on uh, sign up this week to enter the competition. If you don't like my newsletter, you can unsubscribe next week. But uh, that is basically, yeah, the sign up form. So just look for that on my website. And um, I see a comment from Alicia Lamaleo. I love the symbol on the cover and I see it on the wall. What does it symbolize? Uh, thank you, Alicia. So this symbol is actually angel wings. And for me, angels is symbolic of beings on the other side because I always feel when people cross over and also our guides on the other side and the people who are helping us, guiding us, they I, I think of them all as, as angels. And so for me, it really is about connecting with the other side. Um, so thank you. And uh, you have created a sanctuary for me with your Facebook Lives. Much gratitude to you. Oh, thank you, Alicia. I love doing this because I really do love doing this. And I, I mean, I look forward to it every week. All week, I'm kind of thinking, okay, what shall I talk to them about next week? And I look through your questions and to see what resonates. And let's go with the next one that you have. As I spin the uh, virtual barrel, let's see. Bum, bum, bum. Okay, let's pull this one out. All right. Oh, it's a long one. Okay. Um, Anita, you say to embrace your emotions. Don't judge them, even if you feel fear or anger. Mm -hmm. But you also say that we're all connected, and you're adding the whole if you feel fear. Uh, and you are adding to the whole if you feel fear. So you do need to love yourself. If you are angry or fearful and accept your emotions... Are you not adding those emotions to the whole? I'm confused. Okay. I, I hope I articulated that question properly. I think I understood what, what it is. And I know um, I have seen a couple of people uh, ask something similar. And I can see where the confusion can uh, comes in. And so let me reword it in my own way. Um, what I see is that because I speak about how we are all connected. We're, so let's say if we're all connected like by a web... And if you feel joyful, you're bringing joy to the web. And if you feel love, you're bringing love to the web because we're all connected. This is why it's so important to love ourselves and find our joy because this is what we're bringing to the whole, to the web. It's, what, it's the energy we're bringing to our children. You know, you're not doing anyone any favors by draining yourself and by doing what brings you fear and by following the fear-based messages because that's what you're bringing to the whole. And, that is, and it's true, this is what I say. And so I tell people, 
you need to find what brings you joy and you need to love yourself because love and um, love and fear cannot exist together. So if you're feeling fear, it means you need to love yourself more. At the same time, I have also said that when you feel fear and when you feel anger and these things, don't judge yourself for it because if you judge yourself, um, then it means you're not accepting yourself for who you are and just accept those emotions, just accept them. So the questioner wants to know if I accept those emotions of fear, anger, whatever they are, am I not contributing that to the whole, to the whole web if I accept those things about me? And I think that's a very valid question, but really what happens is when you accept those emotions, they pass and, and, but the message, here's the important thing though, here's the key. When you accept all your emotions, even the anger, the fear, what happens is you are sending yourself the message that there is nothing wrong with me. I accept myself for who I am. And that's what you're bringing to the whole. You're bringing this feeling of, I am not judging myself. And when you don't judge yourself, and you see other people feeling fear or anger, you're less likely to judge them because you know what it feels like to feel that. And that's what you bring to the whole. You bring that lack of judgment because you're not judging yourself. You bring that acceptance um, that yes, this is human nature. You're bringing that to the whole. And, um, and in terms of your fear of whether you're bringing the anger or the fear to the whole, if you start fearing that, oh my God, I'm fearing the fear because I might be bringing it to the whole, I might be creating more fear in my life, that exacerbates. So in fact, acceptance diffuses the fear. It even diffuses the anger. And when we accept, we then go to what's underneath the fear or what's anger. We're able to heal what's causing it. When you judge yourself for fear or for anger, you judge it and you deny it and you pretend it's not there and you cover it up and you suppress it. You don't give yourself the opportunity to heal what's underneath and what's causing the fear. And again, also when you judge and deny it, you are doing this thing of moving the garbage from one, one side to the other because it ends up getting bigger because you haven't healed the problem that's causing the fear. But when you accept it, um, then you, it means that I don't judge it. This is part of who I am. And then you're, you're ready to go to why, why do I have that fear or anger? In fact, that's the next level that comes up for you automatically. You don't even have to think about it when you accept who you are and your anger and your fear. So I hope that clarifies because um, I think that is such a great question and I'm glad you asked it because it really gives me a chance to clarify that which could seem like a contradiction if taken out of context. And this is one of the problems is sometimes my words can be taken out of context when you know people um, sp speak about one thing I may have said in one context and then compare it to another thing I've said in another context. So, um, and I see a comment here from Valerie Wild Owl. Thank you, Valerie, because um, I, I, I always love your comments. Just so you know, I already bought the online version of your newest CD. I wish good luck to those in the competition to obtain it. I listened to the healing one the other day. Beautiful. Wow. Thank you. Uh, um, you know, thank you for not being able to resist. That's so sweet of you. Um, and it was funny because uh, Barry went to look online and he said, oh my gosh, people have already bought. And so we were thrilled that people have already bought. And we were thrilled that, you know, even though we said purchase it on the first or the second. And but we were still really thrilled that people couldn't help themselves and couldn't resist and bought the CD. And I will also post in the comments the video we created about the CD so you can have a better understanding of the CD. But also um, some of the things that happened while we were creating the CD is that um, we, uh, there were a lot of synchronicities, which we talk about in the video, which were impossible to happen. And I'll just real quickly tell you one of them on the text on the back of the CD to separate each sentence, there's little angel wings. The angel wings appeared by themselves in the graphic. And we talk about it on that, 
um, on that little video because there is no way they could have appeared because they were those angel wings, that graphic, which is for the cover, was not on that file where Danny was. Danny designed the cover, by the way, so kudos to Danny. Um, he designed the cover, but the angel wing graphic was not in the file where he was writing the text. So he basically, he sent the text to Barry to look at. Barry sent it back to him, and when Danny opened it, the angel wings were there. And so we took that as a divine message. Um, so that was a really, really beautiful synchronicity. And we have a question from Kat de Acre. I hope I've pronounced your name correctly. She says, she asks, do you believe in reincarnation? So I'm going to simplify that by saying, I do believe in multiple lives, but reincarnation suggests linear time. And what I experienced on the other side did not align with how we perceive time on this side. We see time as linear. We see time as sequential. And so we think of reincarnation as I had a past life and that what I learned there, I'm applying it here. What I learned here, I'm going to apply to the next life. It didn't feel like that when I was on the other side because it felt like I had multiple lives, um, but I could see them as though even future, I'm talking about future and the present, this present life panning out into the future and uh, other lives, which I know were what we call past lives, but I could see them as clearly as if they were all running simultaneously right now. And I use the analogy of a building. If you have a building with several stories, um, it was like if we perceive the, my present life as being the fifth floor or the fifth story, so six and seven are future lives and one to four are past lives. However, from that perspective, it was like I could see the whole building, like I could see all seven lives. And it's not like I was using the lessons from lesson three and four and applying them in five. No, it was like all seven lives contributed to make the whole of who I am, the infinite me. And the infinite me is a lot bigger than the physical me that you can see right here. So that is a great question. So thank you for your question. And um, so, uh, so I, do we have any last minute things we want to say before we wrap up for this week? There will be no show next week, right? Because I am traveling to Multiversity 1440 in Northern California to launch my first retreat, the first retreat in this new structure that I've created to take you all on an immersive experience. The retreats, as I said, is more immersive and experiential than it is. It's more heart and sensory based than it is head based. So um, I'm excited about that. I will be there from next Saturday onwards. Um, so unfortunately, there will be no video next week, no Facebook Live next week. We will try and do one the following week, but I know we will be traveling. Uh, but we will still try and do one the following week. But please stay tuned to uh, on my Facebook page and you will know and I will announce when the next one will be. However, during the week, during the course of uh, the week, um, I when I will be at 1440 in Northern California from the 2nd of February to the 8th, we will be doing random Facebook Live appearances. So I will pop up and I will say hello and we will show you a little segments of some of the things that I'm doing during the course of that week. So we will pop up. I look forward to seeing you all. Look forward to seeing you for, the, for another Facebook Live in about two weeks. Please keep your questions and comments coming. They're so helpful to me. They're so inspirational. Thank you for being such a loving community. Love you guys so much. Thank you. And have a wonderful week ahead. Bye. Thank you so much for tuning in to my video. And if you really enjoyed it, I would love for you to subscribe. And the subscribe button is here. And also, I would love for you to watch my suggested video, which is over here. And if you love my content, please feel free to share it to people who you think that would benefit from it. Thank you.